There are a lot of ways to demonstrate your political affiliation. In America, you get bumper stickers and lawn signs. In Thailand, you have people wearing red or yellow shirts. And all over the world, people put symbols or words demonstrating their political affinity on their social media bios. You might even be one of those people. But in Turkey, things are a little bit different. There, politics is also worn on your upper lip. Facial hair has long had connection to social and group identity across the entire world, whether it be the Islamic beard or the clean-shaven look of many militaries. In my previous video, I talked about three specific types of political mustaches in Turkey. Go watch that if you haven't already. This video will be a deeper look into the history of political facial hair in Turkey. Let's first go back to the Ottoman period. Beards were a sign of piety, masculinity, and patriarchal authority. Social dependents, such as the personal servants of the Sultan, even if capable of growing a beard, were not permitted to grow one. Even princes, considered domestics, couldn't grow them. Facial hair was an important marker of identity. Even just a mustache, grown by many social dependents not allowed to grow a beard, distinguished men from women and children. To emancipate a slave was sakal brakmak, or to let his beard grow. Once reaching a social position that allowed a beard, one underwent a complex rite of passage that marked submission to both religious norms and age-based social hierarchy. Things began to change as Europe began to noticeably eclipse the Ottoman Empire in military might. In the 19th century, the Ottoman Empire sought to modernize with the Tanzimat reforms. Beards continued to signify authority and piety, but sultans now preferred to keep their beards trimmed, unlike the long beards of before, and some intellectuals began to sport European-style facial hair without a beard. In a way, it was the reverse of what was going on in Meiji Japan, where westernization resulted in a move toward facial hair by the elite, in a move away from the previously clean-shaven faces of the late Edo period. To conservatives, shaving one's beard contradicted Islam and meant an alignment with the West and the abandoning of local tradition, whether one kept a mustache or even sideburns. For a grown, independent man to have only a mustache was in and of itself a political statement. Men without beards could get into trouble and had difficulties getting hired or serving as officials. The shaving of his beard was actually deemed a sufficient enough official reason to fire the intellectual Ibrahim Shinasi from government service in 1857. To younger Ottoman reformers and intellectuals, their mustaches meant something else. As part of its modernization process, the Ottoman Empire expanded and reformed public education. As students, they were dependents and the sported mustaches rather than beards, but to them, it began to emphasize their belonging to a new generation of educated youth, one that was patriotic, progressive, and outward-oriented. They weren't necessarily Western either. Being clean-shaven was rare, despite exposure to pictures of many clean-shaven Europeans, and the mustache served as an intermediary between that and beardedness. These people and their mustaches would become much more prominent after a group of them staged the Young Turk Revolution of 1908. Finally, even the last Ottoman Sultan, Mehmet VI, wore just a mustache. The blade advanced further with the foundation of the Turkish Republic and the wide-ranging reforms of Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Atatürk decidedly sought to westernize Turkey, from the adoption of the Latin alphabet to the wearing of western dress. Beards were banned for officials. Amidst these reforms, Atatürk completely shaved off his mustache. And to be clean-shaven now meant one's allegiance to the secular modernizing project of Atatürk and the rest of the Republic's new political elite. Many government officials kept their faces this way, as did the military. Ismet Ininu, war hero and Atatürk's successor as president from 1938 to 1950, required that all parliamentarians be clean-shaven, although Ininu himself had a mustache. It's important to remember, though, that the new Kemalist elite didn't represent all of Turkey. Outside of the government and the military, most men continued to wear mustaches. The late 1970s were an intense and violent period of political polarization in Turkey. Over 5,000 people died in clashes between the left-wing opposition and right-wing paramilitary death squads, with an average of 10 assassinations a day. It was during this period of mass violence and social chaos that just the way someone wore their mustache could get them targeted for a killing. 
Leftists wore a thick walrus mustache that covered one's upper lip, inspired by Stalin. Alevis and Kurds associated with the left, they had similar mustaches. Perhaps one of the most prominent wearers of this mustache was Abdullah Ijalan, founder of the PKK, the Kurdistan Workers' Party. Rightists wore the Ilkiji, meaning idealist, mustache, a kind of horseshoe mustache that tapers down at the end. Those who wore this mustache were often part of the fascist paramilitary organization, the Grey Wolves. The shape of this mustache is often said to represent the M of the MHP, the abbreviation for the National Action Party, the far-right party of which the Grey Wolves is a part. Along with their eyebrows, it also represented the three crescents of the Nationalist Action Party. The 1970s also saw the politicization of another kind of mustache as a new political faction emerged in Turkish politics. This one was associated with the contemporaneous rise of political Islam. It was the thin and well-trimmed mustache, groomed to be in line with Islam. But this mustache was also worn by religiously observant men in general, without regard for politics. This is referred to some as the badem, meaning almond, mustache. Things came to a head in the summer of 1980, with political violence between the left and right at an all-time high, the assassination of former Prime Minister Nihat Erim, and the failure of the Turkish parliament, stuck in political deadlock after a number of unstable coalition governments over the past several years to elect a new president for months. That September, the military under General Kenan Evren came in and threw a coup. New rules were announced for civil servants, parliamentarians, and university students. No beards, no sideburns, and no more communist or fascist mustaches. Leftist groups in particular saw intense crackdowns. Although their symbolism continues to live on, right and especially left-wing mustaches have grown increasingly rare in the following decades. But one political mustache was here to stay, the Islamist mustache. The thin and well-trimmed mustache with a gap between the hair and upper lip. This mustache, a conservative one, was not one of the mustaches prohibited by the new military government. It's this mustache that's worn by longtime Turkish leader Recep Tayyip Erdogan, whose Justice and Development Party, the AKP, comes from the Islamist tradition, and many of his supporters and cabinet wear a similar mustache. In 2017, one government minister reported that some ministers grew facial hair at the urging of Erdogan. However, mustaches aren't as politicized as they were in the past, even after the end of military influence in Turkish politics. More and more, especially young men, are likely to have no facial hair at all, or if they do, to have facial hair inspired not by politics, but rather by TV shows such as Magnificent Century, or foreign trends such as the early 2010s hipster trend. What do you think? Are political mustaches destined to die out, or is Turkish politics set to see a bushy revival? Thanks for watching. If you want to see more content like this, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button to receive notifications whenever I release a new video.